Yeah. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another wonderful class on the past of physics. Mr. Dura is my name. Um, so we'll take you through uh, another simple harmonic question today. In our previous class, we discussed about SHF using the disk. In today's class, our focus is on simple pendulum. Um, and the previous part has brought up two of the errors that the journey come across when students are using the stepwatch and when they're performing experiments on the on the Buddha spring. If you haven't watched that, I advise go back and watch it because some very vital points were raised in the course of the class. So in this class, we are not talking about the stopwatch today, but basically what are the errors? And the uh, students uh, make wide performing experiments on some minimum. And what are those things they do that um, make their readings to be inaccurate and at times uh, not so uh, precise? Number one is the use of the Nita rule along with the length of the rope used for the pendulum. At various times along the uh, the experiments, you might be asked to vary the length of the rope along uh, this uh, meter rope. So the students actually do not fix the meter rule as this. And so they expect it to be the plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 centimeter difference. This is actually what they are supposed to measure or what to measure. So make sure that at every point in time, this meter rule is plumbed to the same return stand that pollution depending on. This is to minimize the errors we encounter when taking the length of the rope used for various uh, timing of the, uh, of the pendulum. So that's number one. Number two is the displacement of the main, uh, pendulum bump while performing the experiments. Uh, some of you, some of the students have watched them when they perform the experiments. The angle of displacement of the pendulum is so wide that at times it's, uh, the pendulum falls off the return stand. That's enough of it. But basically, all you need to do is to slightly displace the pendulum at a very small angle, say 5 degrees or maybe 7. Let the angle, angular displacement from the center should be greater than uh, 10 degrees. And it uh, reduces the pendulum and let it oscillate. So that is very important. If you don't do that, if you use a bigger angle of displacement, you are likely to encounter what is called error qualified solution, on which normally should be avoided when performing the experiment on simple pendulum. Only oscillation should be avoided. And the best way to avoid only oscillations is to displace the pendulum bulb at an angle less than or equals to 10 degrees. So, um, another thing you need to note when you're performing experiments on pendulum is the timing, which is actually similar to what you have when you are considering a loaded spring. If you ask to, let's say, the length of this rope and measure from the metal rope is about. Um, is about 21 centimeters. So at this length, I'm asked to take uh, 20 oscillations and probably find a period of frequency depending on what the examiner asks to do. So why, at what point do you start the timing? Is it at the point of releasing the pendulum ball or you allow the pendulum to oscillate for some time? Then uh, most students uh, normally start the timing at the point of releasing the pendulum. This is absolutely unnecessary, like I said, while discussing with you on the loaded spring. You can release the ball at the length stipulated and allow it to oscillate for some time. Pick your point of oscillation, whether it's a strip right or a strip left, at the point of time. And start the timing, like I will do now. Let me reset the structure to zero. And I want to start my timing from my extreme right. So I go one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And I'll give it to you in six months, eight months, seven months, which is perfect. So you don't be so much uh, in a rush to start the timing when you perform the experiment on Zoom for everyone. And the last and the most important error, some students, you know, uh, encounter when performing the experiment is avoiding drought. Drought in terms of wind of flow of, uh, of air and flow of air through the windows or through the uh, ceiling fans or whatever supply of air you have in your laboratory. It is important that these items are prevented from obstructing the readings of the pendulum. How do you do that? Close the windows, switch off the fan. As you can see in this experiment, you can see the thread that is behind this uh, pendulum is moving left and right. And without even displacing the thread, that is the effect of weight on an SHM experiment involving pendulum or uh, loaded spring. So you have to make sure you have all that to minimize error. Alright, so that's basically all of the pendulum and the ground. Other things, other populations uh, regarding this will be discussed in our subsequent class. Many thanks for listening. Mr. Doris, my name once again, the Evaluation Physics Instructor. You can tune to my Instagram handle, Evaluation Physics 62, to view more videos on prominent topics physics. Many thanks for listening. I will want to do the rest of the day. Bye bye.